The assembly gathered in the great dome chamber as the final sun rays of the day faded from the translucent roof overhead. Representatives from every nation and colony on Earth and beyond were in attendance, all anxious to hear the moon speaker's latest findings from their lunar outpost. Lima rose from her seat, clutching a data tablet. As senior moon speaker, it fell to her to address the assembly. Esteemed members, she began, her calm voice carrying effortlessly through the dome. I come before you today with troubling news from the moon. For some time now, our outpost has been monitoring strange energy readings and tremors emerging from the ancient lunar lava tubes. Only a few days ago, our researchers broke into one such tube and discovered its source. She paused, sensing the tension in the closely packed assembly. Every eye was fixed on her expectantly. Within the lava tube sat a massive honeycomb-like structure, its cells filled with some kind of organic material. It appears an alien life form has taken root beneath the moon's surface, one with remarkable adaptations for survival in the lunar environment. Our scientists named it the Hive. Murmurs rippled through the dome as the delegates exchanged alarmed looks. Lima pressed on. That was not the most troubling part. As our researchers observed, the cells began to quiver and shake. Creatures began to emerge, strange insect-like aliens with pale chitinous exoskeletons. They were clearly awakening from some kind of dormancy. Sensors indicated the hive has grown exponentially in size and is swarming with these new aliens by the thousands, perhaps tens of thousands. They appear highly aggressive. Three of our researchers were killed before they could escape. Gas erupted from the assembled dignitaries. The death of even one moon speaker on a research mission was unheard of. Lima waited for silence to descend once more before continuing. We launched an orbital strike immediately to contain the threat, but the hive and its inhabitants have only grown stronger since. Our most advanced munitions failed to so much as crack its outer layers. It has adapted remarkable resilience to lunar hazards we never anticipated. It is clear this is no ordinary life form. The hive represents a new frontier of alien physiology we are ill prepared to face. I and the moon speakers believe it poses an existential risk not just to our lunar outpost, but potentially to all of humanity if not contained. For long moments, no one spoke as the shocking revelation sank in. Then General Terrace of the UN Space Commander rose from his seat. We must mobilize our full military assets at once, he declared. Nothing less than a unified global response stands a chance against this threat. Others leapt to their feet as well, each advocating their own strategies. Careful escalation is key. We must study this hive further before committing to violence, countered a Martian senator. Our colonies on the moon and Mars are most at risk. Evacuate them immediately, cried another. The assembly dissolved into clamorous debate as panic and dissent spread. Lima watched with concern, loath to see the nations of Earth fracture in the face of danger. She raised her hands and called for calm above the din. Esteemed colleagues, please. Unified action is vital, but haste and fear will only lead us astray. True solution lies not in destruction alone, but in understanding. With care and wisdom, humanity has faced every challenge the cosmos has thrown at us. This will be no different. Her words cut through the noise, reminding all present of humanity's resilience through the ages. Gradually, order was restored. The moon speakers will redouble our research, Lima continued. With your support, we will unlock the hive's mysteries and find a solution that need not come at the cost of life. There are always alternatives to violence if we have the courage to seek them. Have faith in each other and in the spirit of ingenuity that defines our species. The assembly fell silent, reflecting on her message of hope. After a long moment, General Terra spoke again. The Space Command stands ready to aid the moon speakers in their efforts with resources and personnel at their disposal. Our aim is containment and understanding, not destruction, unless there is no other choice. Murmurs of agreement arose from others. The Martian senator nodded. You have the full backing of our scientists as well. Together, humanity will solve this challenge. Lima bowed gratefully to the assembly. Though danger loomed, she took heart in the enduring cooperation between Earth's nations. With care and wisdom, a peaceful solution could yet be found. Deep in the underground lava tubes of the moon, the hive stirred. 
its chambers pulsed with a strange bioluminescence as billions of the worm-like aliens swarmed within, tending cell after cell in a hive mind of singular purpose. They had slept for eons, waiting for the primordial magics that suffused the icy satellite to awaken them once more. Now their ancient song echoed through the rock, a chant as old as the moon itself. Hungry, grow, multiply, feed. Their song summoned more of their kind up from the depths, drawn inexorably to the hive where they belonged. There was life above on the surface, a potential new source of nourishment to slake an appetite as old as the stars. Sensoria embedded in the rocky walls assess this new element with dispassionate analysis. The aliens were strange and myriad, some like nothing encountered before in the hive's long memory. But all living things were simply patterns to be decoded and assimilated if need be into the greater whole. Adapt or perish, such had ever been the way of things. A new note arose in the song, one of calculation and promise. Evolve, adapt, endure, consume. On the ancient lava plains of the moon, the hive song was carried far on whisper-thin tendrils, creeping into crevices and fissures without. Its message was etched into the very bones of the satellite itself, all according to the grand design, all fueling the impulse to grow, to spread, to swarm ever outward. Back in the domed assembly chamber, discussion raged on long into the lunar night. Strategies were debated and discarded, simulations run, potential first contacts role-played. From a viewing niche high above the throng, Lima watched with pride as humanity's greatest minds put faction aside and joined forces against the emerging threat. She believed, as surely as the tides, that their gifts of compassion and fellowship would prove stronger than any hive's instinct to consume. Only by understanding each other could threats be overcome without costing life. Her hope had not been misplaced. Through unity of purpose, solutions would come. The sun would rise on a new day of cooperation between the nations of Earth. And across the airless plains of Luna, in whisper-thin tunnels deep below, another stir was beginning. The hive was listening and learning. The morning brought fresh resolve to the moon speakers in their lofty ziggurat on the lunar far side. Lima rose early to greet the rosy dawn, reciting the old words, as was her custom to center herself for the challenges ahead. Down in the research levels, activity buzzed like a stirred anthill. Dr. Nuru Kalu, chief xenobiologist, emerged from her lab, scratching at the stubble on her shaved scalp. The trials of the past days showed in the puffy bags under her kind eyes. Since the discovery of the hive, she'd snatched only minutes of sleep fueled by dozens of stims, but her energy and mind remained as sharp as the scalpel in her hand. Nuru called her staff to gather around a hologram of the hive in the central atrium. Analysis of the samples and debris from our strike is complete, she began in her accented alto. These aliens display both fungal and insect characteristics in their cellular structure, truly alien and yet eerily familiar. Most crucial is that they form a true hive mind, a gestalt consciousness connecting every individual. An attack on one is felt by all. This Sinta muttered unease through her audience, researchers of every biology and persuasion. Nuru pressed on. However, there may be opportunity in this. If we can establish peaceful contact, think what insights could be gained into new forms of cognition and social organization. More pressingly, it gives us a nonviolent entry point to appeal for understanding. In the crowd, a woman stirred, Commander Billy Cantrell, highest ranking officer of the UN Space Command's Lunar Rapid Deployment Forces. Billy cut an imposing figure with her muscular physique and pixie cut of steel gray hair, though kindness lurked behind her intense eyes. Like all special forces, her true history was classified, but rumor told of brave feats defending frontier colonies from pirating clades. With respect, establishing contact assumes these things want to talk, Billy spoke up. So far, they've only shown hostility. My squadrons stand ready if the hive can't be reasoned with peacefully. But nonviolence should be the goal. We don't know their true nature or drives yet. Nuru smiled gratefully at the commander. Thank you, Billy. Your prudence reminds us that force remains an option of last resort. For now, all resources will go towards peaceful solutions. 
At that moment, an aide whispered urgent news in Nuru's ear. Her dark features creased with worry. It seems our guests waste no time. Seismic detectors have picked up unusual tremors spreading from the hive. We must get down there at once. Rushing with her team to the landing modules, Nuru's thoughts raced. Were the aliens reacting to their attack, or was some new purpose driving their behavior? She vowed to find answers without further bloodshed, if such a thing were possible. But the true nature of this enigmatic hive remained beyond guessing. All soon boarded shuttles for the short flight to the vaunted lava tube. There, in the shadows of the great honeycomb structure, they found the trembling aliens emerging in droves once more. But to Nuru's relief, no signs of open hostility greeted them. Only an eerie, penetrating song seemed to direct the hive's actions now. Could communication at last be achieved, if one but knew the song's meaning? The answers, as ever, lay just out of reach. As Nuru's team approached the lava tube, their sensors detected strange oscillations coming from deep underground. Something big is happening down there, said Corporal Kamishi Kimada, the expedition's sensor tech. Nuru frowned. Stay alert, everyone, but remember our goal is contact, not conflict. They entered the yawning tunnel, flashlight beams slicing the gloom. Ahead, a pulsing glow emerged, the hive, its walls now squirming with motion. But what drew the eye were towering structures taking shape amidst the aliens. Honeycomb towers stretched towards the surface, sprouting like improbable mushrooms all around. Incredible, gasped Nuru. They're expanding their hive at an exponential rate. But to what end? Her question was answered as the song grew deafening, rumbling up from the planet's marrow. The towers grew, each a translucent pillar stretching 50 meters skyward now. And within their glowing cells, shapes were forming. Vague humanoid silhouettes built of the same icarus biomass. Nuru reeled in shock. They're constructing bodies, cloning themselves to infiltrate the surface. At that moment, one of the towering shells cracked open with a wet rip. A glistening figure stepped forth, 10 meters tall and taking its first lurching strides. Its features were only roughly humanoid, all spindly limbs and bulbous senses, but its purpose was unmistakable. Evacuate, cried Nuru, but it was too late. With shocking speed, the lumbering aliens smashed aside equipment and crumbled the tunnel walls. Kamashi was crushed under falling debris with a sickening crunch. Enraged yet disciplined, Commander Billy drew her force lance. Non-lethals only, people, but protect yourselves. Nuru, get to the shuttle now. But the scientist refused to retreat while mysteries remained. She stared, transfixed, as more of the clones emerged, bleeding their haunting song. A thrill of discovery warred with horror within her. The clones charged with bizarre grace, skittering atop thin limbs. Billy's squad returned fire with stun blasts, but the aliens' strange bodies absorbed shots with only momentary distraction. Containment fields now, barked Billy into her radio. Energy barriers sprung up, caging small packs of the clones, but doing little against their sheer numbers. Some clones ignored the fray, heading for the surface exit with fluid determination. They mean to seed the moon cried Nuru, but she failed to duck a flailing limb, sent tumbling into darkness. Billy sprinted after her mentor, batting aside clone limbs with her lance. Nuru, hold on! But in the chaos, both women were separated from the rest. Nuru regained consciousness amidst a landscape of glistening flesh. She was trapped deep in the twisting tunnels of the hive itself, alone but for the probing song vibrating the walls. Clones surrounded her, head cocked in curiosity more than threat. Their song held her enraptured. No longer an intruder, she was absorbed into a fugue of connection, learning their cycles of hunger and growth, their unity through shared memory. The hive's duty to spread, as cells in all life do, and most of all, its alien joy in relentless evolution without end. Nuru slowly emerged from her trance, seeing with new clarity. These were no mindless invaders, but beings following deep biological imperatives as old as life itself. And what threat was a mere bacteria to greater existences? She gently touched the slick flesh of one towering clone. You mean us no harm. You seek only fulfillment of purpose, as all do. There is another way. Her words were carried upon the song, 
rippling back to the hive's core. And there, in chambers unguessable, vast faculties realign themselves towards understanding this anomaly called human. Meanwhile, Billy held her own against swarming clones near the tunnel entrance. But plasma rifles and mines were taking their toll, staining the rock with violet gore. Fall back, cried Billy as rubble collapsed, sealing the tunnel behind. She was cut off from escape or backup, surrounded in the lamplight with a dozen hissing clones. Her radio crackled. Billy, it's Nuru. Tell your people to stand down. The hive wishes parley. I think I have broker peace between us. Billy gazed dubiously at the creatures watching her with too human interest. But she trusted Nuru with her life. Stand down, squad. Mission accomplished, it seems. A profound song echoed from the tunnels then, one of greeting and apology. The clones withdrew respectfully as Nuru emerged unharmed from the gloom. A new day was dawning on the moon. Word of the truce spread fast across lunar comms. At the moon speaker's ziggurat, Lima wept with relief upon hearing Nuru contacted safely. But celebrations were put on hold as more disturbing news arrived. A clone seeding party had reached the near side, wreaking havoc amongst automated mining outposts. Sensors showed the creatures absorbing solar radiation, mutating at an alarming rate. Their song carried a new note of madness and hunger unrestrained. Something had gone terribly wrong with the hive's evolution. Billy and Nuru raced to the scene, touching down amid smoldering machinery. Clones several stories tall now rampaged, smashing tunnels and crushing bots beneath talon limbs. Their flesh boiled and ruptured with each change. Nuru stared aghast. The hive assimilated too much too fast. Its evolutionary programming is spiraling out of control. We have to stop this, for everyone's sake. She opened communications, pleading in the hive tongue for reason. But the clones only responded with maddened screams. Their connection to the greater whole had frayed into chaos. Billy brought her squad up in tactical formation. Non-lethals have failed. New mission, containment and mercy killing if needed. Nuru, get to safety. This is our realm now. The scientists retreated regretfully as war broke out across the plain. Billy's fighters targeted joints and sensory clusters, systematically dismantling the rampaging clones. Plasma pulses flashed brilliant blue against the black sky, but the abominations regenerated quickly, mutating anew with each fall. Limbs multiplied into thrashing pseudopods while chitin plates formed bizarre armor. Billy found herself desperately trying to put down friends instead of foes. A larger clone appeared on the ridge above them, eyes blazing and maw gaping wide. From within that rippling gullet bloomed an impossible flower, sucking atoms from the void to fuel further chaos. Scatter! But Billy was too slow, enveloped as the thing spewed forth a superheated filament net. She shuddered, feeling her bio suit evaporate while flesh and bone crackled beneath. As darkness claimed her, a song pierced the screams. Radiant notes of a bittersweet hymn, bringing coherence where madness once ran riot. The maddened clones froze, then collapsed as one, as the song asserted harmony over dissonance. When Billy awoke on a med table, her blistered skin already regrowing thanks to miracles of therapy, Nuru sat holding her remaining hand. The hive regained control. Its evolutionary imperative has shifted, shall we say, into more cooperative realms thanks to our insight and weakly Billy grinned. Good. Wouldn't want them outdoing humanity at our game. We're still champs at blowing shit up. Nuru managed a watery chuckle, squeezing Billy's fingers. Rest now, brave one. Peace has come. Though the road was rocky, you did well. In the months that followed, humanity's understanding of the hive deepened by leaps. Where its song once alarmed, now it soothed, an enduring reminder that alien need not mean enemy. Colonists strolling the Maria sometimes heard lonely notes carried on solar winds, a bittersweet reminder that even invaders sought only life and purpose in their way. Nuru's findings proved revolutionary, upending paradigms of biology, sociology, and more. Her work earned her the rare honor of becoming Moonspeaker, carrying humanity's light to the stars after Lima's peaceful passing. Billy fully recovered and was gifted command of a new ship, 
UNSS Peacekeeper, first of a fleet forged from understanding, not fear. Its dedication ceremony saw Nuru and a hive emissary sealing the hard-won truce with a poignant duet echoing to every moon and planet. Centuries later, as humanity spread to the abyss and aliens become neighbors, the first peaceful contact is still recalled. How war was averted through courage, wisdom, and faith that even the strangest life held intrinsic worth. The truce endures to this day, an ever-strengthening bond between species once poised for extinction of the other. From crisis came not just survival, but fellowship. And on the moon that witnessed it all, echoes of song remain. Two centuries later, Captain Sanda Liao strode the corridors of the peacekeeper, pride warming her heart as lunar settlers and hive drones mingled freely below. So much had changed since the fabled events her lineage remembered. A priority message flashed. The Luna colony on Farside had lost contact. Sanda altered course, anxiety gnawing her gut. Surely this remote outpost suffered only a technical glitch. But Luna's frontier history bred caution. Arrival showed her fears were well-placed. The sealed domes lay dark and silent. Pressure suits strewn about the excavation site like discarded shells. Sanda rallied security teams to sweep the tunnels. Subterranean shafts once dug to unlock lunar mysteries now seemed ominous as Sanda's lights cut the darkness. Her suit sensors picked up faint life readings ahead, hastening her steps. A gruesome scene awaited, colonists in pieces, blood spattered across strange hieroglyphs scrawled upon the fractured basalt. But no visible assailants remained. Sanda grit her teeth. This was no accident. Someone or something wanted access to these tunnels badly enough to kill for it. Her crew examined the macabre writings with a mix of dread and wonder. They resembled no known language, yet subtle familiarities hinted at darker kinship to the old songs. Overhead, a flicker disturbed the gloom. Flashlights don't flicker like that. Sanda narrowed her eyes, raising her plasma pistol uncertainly. Dim shapes detached from the shadows, floating spheres studded with gleaming orbs. The spheres emitted eerie keening that crawled Sanda's veins with ice. Her suit speakers translated haltingly. We come in peace. We are observers. <laughs>